Hey there, YouTubers. All right, so looking at the i7-10700K and doing a little 4K video editing using HitFilm Express 15 here, which is free. Great little program. So uh, let's talk about our actual video clip. It's basically, uh, this is going to output as 4K. It's a bunch of different uh, clips, uh, or two different clips, some special effects. Uh, everything 60 FPS and then the output turns into 4K 60 FPS. So when uh, I come over here and I do export export now all contents that gets this thing going and it processes. So you see eight different um, basically finished processes here or exports uh, there's four different ones and I did two runs each so I'll talk about the four different ones and uh, they're not all in the same order and that'll that'll help you understand what the times are down here so we'll we'll get to that so let's look at our first run you can see it took six minutes 24 seconds uh, what did I do in that run so you saw what the video clip is how long it is now, if we look over here, the first one was done with uh, no overclock, okay? And these are all default settings. So if I run this over here, you'll see all default, okay? Now, what I did change here, uh, why I did this one first, there's no explanation, but uh, Turbo Boost Power Max, also known as PL1, and Turbo Boost Short Power Max, also known as PL2. These were set to unlimited. And from there, I hit the apply button. Okay. So once I did that, then I went and ran our first clip. Uh, it processed and it took 6 minutes and 24 seconds to do that. Okay. So, you know, you might be wondering why did I bother with power limits? Well, uh, with the i7-10700, okay, the locked version, I found that messing with PL1 and PL2, setting them unlimited, actually um, improved the amount of time it took to process. So just looking at this video, the three lowest numbers on here are the three that were um, done with power limit set to unlimited, okay? Now, will we find the same thing here? Um, well, I can tell you, looking at the numbers, something something changed here. Um, so let's look at the second number, which came in at 619. How did I get that? Well, that's actually the default setting, okay? So default is moving this guy back to 125 watts. And to get there... Not that you guys need that. 125 there, and then this guy needs to be moved to 229. Hit apply, and then boom. So that's how that one is done. So it is completely default, right? This is how, when you first go in, it's going to be set up. Came in here, boom, ran everything, got 619. So the default is actually uh, faster in this case than uh, power limits. Well, in a scientific experiment, you'd probably do each one of these three times and see. Um, in this case, that really, you know, I can't say that was necessarily our goal. But uh, after two runs, we could uh, see whether it actually, you know, was going to stay consistent. So let's talk about what the third run is. Obviously, I did something here. We got 608. Okay. So, let me tell you how I got 608. 608 was basically changing all of these other cores. Okay. The multipliers. So, like I said, these are defaults. Uh, and if you want to put kind of a uh, slight overclock on all these guys, then you would change the rest of the cores. Um, increase their multiplier so that's what we did here hit the apply button and boom 
So one thing this does is it's going to make the uh, CPU temperature hotter as well. Um, but it does, you know, from what I've seen, increase benchmarks. In this case, guess what? It shaved off 11 seconds off of the default, and that's probably the most minor type of overclock you could do. So right there, that is a uh, considerable savings. Uh, if you're going to do a lot of editing uh, continuously, 4K over time, you know, uh, it may be worth the extra power that you're you're burning up. All right, so that's how I got the third one. Now the fourth one. This was a overclock, and guess what? What did we do? We set this stuff to unlimited. All right. Hit apply, and guess what? That had a negative effect. We went from 608 to 610. Okay. All right, so that's how I got one through four. Now, how did I get five through eight here? Well, we, uh, we ran the power limited, unlimited, and overclocking again. Got the exact same time. All right. Then I shut off the power limiting, just kept the overclock, ran it again. We got 611. So right now it's kind of interesting looking at this. The best time was just the OC with the, def the everything else defaulted, right? Or the power limits defaulted. Then I ran two of them, uh, worst time, but they were consistent. Did the uh, OC only again, and now that time is actually worse. Um, go figure. All right. So how do we get line number seven? Line number seven is the uh, default. Okay. So everything was back to default. And guess what? It is worse this time than the second run. So, you know, part of this could be temperature. I tried to get the temperatures back down um, before I ran these again. Um, and then the final one is the power limits set to unlimited with the uh, with no OC, right? So these last two had no overclock on them. Now, I could run, you know, th another set of four runs here. Um, but I think basically what you get from this is the overclock is going to help you out. Turning on power, uh, power limits to unlimited for this processor doesn't really do anything for you. Uh, at least for this 4K editing in terms of the software. And... Uh, so I think consistently you see that the slight overclock uh, is going to save you some time. That's almost, uh, what, 2%. Um, so there you have it, folks. That's all I have for this video. I hope you got something out of it. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.